Hello everyone and welcome to my alternate SpaceX moon lander proposal which I will discuss here in Kerbal Space Program with Realism Overhaul. This is my Starship model. Well, the fins are not. Those are from B9 procedural wings, but as it so happens, SpaceX's uh, current proposal does not include fins anyway, so we can just delete those. Uh, SpaceX's moon lander proposal, as uh, depicted by NASA and artist depictions, uh, does not have any heat shielding at the bottom to make it lighter because they're basically going to be using it as a vehicle that goes from lunar orbit down to the surface and back to lunar orbit. So they're not going to come back to Earth with this lander. And that's an important piece of this puzzle. Uh, so they don't need the heat shielding. Otherwise, if they were coming back to Earth, they'd want to air break and use the heat shielding to do that. And they probably want the fins as well. Um, but I have some concerns. Uh, first of all, they still have all the engines at the bottom. Second of all, it's really, really tall and has a lot of dry mass that it doesn't need to land on the moon. It really doesn't. And yeah, I would totally tip this thing over, basically. Uh, if you have seen any of my other videos in Kerbal Space Program, you know. You, you would have looked at that lander and gone, Tyler Rays would totally tip that over on the moon. So... I'm not thrilled with this prospect, and it just seems like a waste, because it has way more delta V than it needs, it has way more dry mass than it needs. You're talking about, uh, if we take all the fuel out of here, now I've got a payload in here, I think, so let me take that out, so that's a payload we can remove. We're talking about 120 odd tons of dry mass depending on whether they include the engines or not. If we take off some of the engines, we could probably get with less. But, you know, 100 tons of dry mass you're talking about. And you don't need all of that. And it's going to tip over in my hands. So I wanted to propose a raise safe Starship lander. Now, I understand they want NASA help to fund Starship. I understand that. And I also understand that they don't want to make too much new hardware or any new hardware at all that they aren't already developing. So my proposal will not require either of those, uh, will not violate that. So let me show you my version of the Starship Lander. So when I made my Starship model, of course, I wasn't interested in just copying what SpaceX was going to do. The point of me making a Starship model was so that I could mess around with it and come up with my own ideas and not just blindly follow whatever they were going to do. So uh, apologies to those who will find this offensive because it's not the SpaceX orthodox version, but this is my lander. Uh, and you can see it's truncated, obviously. I am using SpaceX lander legs because they only have to deploy once. Uh, around the moon. It's going to hang out around the moon. It doesn't have to retract them ever again. So the crush core thing, I don't know how that works out for it, but th they just need to stay there uh, and they'll be fine. They don't need to retract or anything. And I noticed in the artist depiction of the lander that they had high mounted thrusters. Now they had those integrated into the body and here I've got them as sort of super Draco packs on the side here. But the point of those is to limit how much of the regolith gets uh, blown away uh, because the regolith can you know damage equipment and all that stuff and there's other problems too so on the surface we would be uh, throttling down the main engines to a minimum and using those high mounted thrusters which are basically uh, super dracos if you'd like to think of them like that a little bit more powerful than super dracos uh, to uh, handle some of the landing thrust now, the engines that we have here are Merlin 1D vacuums. And uh, they're sort of clipped in. Uh, that bulkhead is not a necessary bulkhead. Um, so we, we can move that. That was just a mistake in my modeling here because I didn't recall how big Merlin 1Ds were. They're pretty darn big when you look at it. The nozzle uh, section is nearly as big as a Raptor vacuum. And here we have two Falcon 9 Block 4 upper stage fuel tanks. And so you don't need to develop any new hardware. You just put the tanks in, put your Merlin 1D vacuums in, and amazingly enough, you have enough Delta V to land on the moon and get back to orbit and probably rendezvous with something because uh, landing on the moon and getting back to orbit requires me. If, if, if you really do it very badly, 4,800, 
but you can get by with like 4,000. So you have plenty of extra fuel there, plenty of extra payload capacity. The dry mass of this is 36 tons compared to the full Starship, which is 100 and or so tons. Uh, that uh, 120 probably includes the engines. So, so it's a pretty good deal. And uh, I've I've made this sort of drop down thing, and now the drop down thing works out for us. You see. I've got the ladder here, I got the ladder there, and they can just climb out and go down there. No need for an elevator. This has methane and oxygen to run the fuel cells and the RCS thrusters still, so you could underfuel that and get more payload capacity like that. I don't know how much the fuel cells would take or how much RCS you need. We have this extra structural part, and of course we need to be able to refuel this, but now we are refueling a mere, you know, maybe 200 tons, maybe 200 tons, um, a little bit less than 200 tons you can refuel this with, as opposed to a thousand tons of refueling for Starship, right? So the big problem is you can't in situ resource refuel Starship on the moon because you can't easily get the carbon. So the methane, you can probably refuel the oxygen, that's fine, but there's the methane, you can't get it. So, it was always meant for Mars. Now, if, you, if, if Starship runs on Hydrolox instead, that's a different story. Then, still, it's really hard to refuel 1,000 tons. But, at least, maybe you can do in C2 resource utilization there. Uh, but, otherwise, you're going to have to carry the methane from Earth to refuel it. And, you've turned Starship into a reusable lander that's supposed to hang out in lunar orbit and go down again. Uh, but it needs to be refueled with a whole lot of fuel, talking about sending at least the methane over, 500 tons or so of it, for, for two trips down. I, I think Starship has enough Delta V where it could potentially make two trips down on one tank. But yeah, this is better. <laughs> so this will make one trip down and you refuel about 200 tons uh, if you're sending the oxygen as well, otherwise you're refueling less than 100 tons for each trip. So it's still huge by lander standards. Uh, just as a reference, I mean, it's still going to have more capacity than any other lander. I mean, if you take a look at the uh, Apollo command module here, compared to the crew section of this, I mean, there's just no comparison or uh, Dragon Capsule. Dragon Capsule is actually pretty big. But... Uh, you know, there's plenty of space in there for making this a base on the moon, if you want it. And of course, we still have some unused space here for extra habitat space, uh, should that be required. Um, otherwise, tanks are right here, so... You could put extra life support in here. There's, uh, aside from the area that's taken up by the engines, you can tuck life support down in here. There's plenty of space for that. And again, our Delta V situation is pretty good. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to develop the refueling capacity for this. And again, if you want to convert this to methylox, since it's kerosene oxygen right now using the regular old Merlin 1Ds, thrust weight ratio is fine if we, if we throw the Merlin 1Ds down all the way. Uh, I don't know if this will calculate it. So, Merlin 1Ds throw down all the way still has plenty uh, to allow for a landing on the moon as far as thrust to weight ratio. And then we've got uh, these thrusters up here that are built into the Starship lander that can do some of it as well. And that the, the upper thrusters here are just enough to make for a soft landing in that situation. So, so I'm going to come up with the whole system for this, surrounding this sort of lander, and try it out. But for now, I just wanted to propose this, and maybe you guys have some ideas. And if we could do a methane oxygen Merlin 1D vacuum, that would be even better, and then convert these tanks to methane and oxygen, of course. But I wanted to keep it such that we're, we've only got stuff that SpaceX is going to develop, or has already developed anyway. And that's what we've got here. So they don't need to do anything else new. You save the extra mass. They're already doing the tanks on their own for the rest of the Starship anyway. 
So yeah, maybe this would be better. <laughs> it would certainly be safer if I was the pilot. So I'll, I'll leave that to uh, you guys to discuss. If you have some proposals, uh, that would be good. If you have some objections and you think that we need all of Starship to land every time, uh, you can state why. Maybe I'm missing something. Uh, I'd probably remove the windows here uh, just for those uh, who... Yeah, uh, that, that's just because I didn't want to change the model again. So that's just laziness on my part. That probably doesn't need windows. This 24 tons is without the... Uh, yeah, this is... So this section with these tanks in and the engines, this is 24 tons. And you have the crew pod with whatever cargo they have. You add that in, you got 43 tons. 43 tons dry. Okay, so that's the reference point. And then wet, we've got more than 5,000 meters per second of delta V. Now, of course, I would like to address one possible objection right up front, and that's how do we get it to orbit in the first place and how do we get it to the moon, right? I mean, after all, uh, you're used to seeing the full starship on top of Super Heavy, but as it turns out, there's no problem putting this on top. Once you've reduced the dry mass, uh, the Merlin 1D vacuums provided with quite a lot of delta V and thrust to weight ratio, just the two of them, uh, to get this to orbit. And the catch is we may need to have uh, the super heavy land on a barge. I'm not sure. Okay, so we're going to try this out and uh, make sure that the Starship lander can get to orbit. And then, of course, just like Starship would have to, uh, it would refuel in orbit, uh, except that process will be much easier. It could probably be topped off by uh, one or two launches of a regular starship. So a regular starship would bring up the fuel to it, and uh, then it would refuel with one or two launches, and then it would be it would have enough. Five thousand meters per second is enough to transfer to the moon, get into orbit around the moon and rendezvous with anything you'd like around the moon at any orbit. 5,000 is more than enough for that. And uh, then it would have to refuel in orbit of the moon to land. But uh, if you're wondering whether Starship, the full version, would be able to transfer to the moon, uh, make orbit around the moon, land on the moon, get into orbit back around the moon, and then come back to Earth to low Earth orbit without error breaking, the answer is no. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter what load is carrying, doesn't matter how light they're going to make it. It would require in excess of 12,000 meters per second, which just will not be within its capabilities uh, at all. Uh, so forget losing the fins or reducing the mass from the tiles. 12,000 is out of the question. So now if it error braked, if it kept the tiles and error braked, um, then it could get back to low Earth orbits directly, potentially, if it's really, really light and not carrying any payload. But that's still a tight thing you're talking about, 9,000 9, meters per second overall. So you'd have to make it like the, the original idea where it was basically an SSTO. But other than that, uh, yeah... No, you're not going to be able to do the full trip on, on one go and refuel in low Earth orbit, and that's part of the problem. So, if you could, that would be great. That that would... Uh, then I probably wouldn't have necessarily proposed this if I thought that that was possible. Okay, so, but let's go with this and see if it works. Okay, well, we're not really turned the right way, but we'll take it for now. Uh, throttle up, SAS is on, and leaving some room, ignition. People suggested uh, getting uh, but, uh, these on like rings or something to lessen the lag, but uh, to be honest, uh, I have ulterior motives for actually wanting the lag. You might not have thought of this, but it's actually sort of easier to land super heavy if it's laggy. <laughs> I know it's sort of cheaty, but uh, yeah. So when we get to the whole landing super heavy again part of the deal, I might actually not want it to be very quick. <laughs> Always thinking ahead here. 
And again, our raptors here are rated as they were tested, so they're almost certainly going to be better than what we have here right now. So I'm planning to reserve 10% of the total burn time for the stage, but if it turns out that we end up with enough Delta V before we get to that, I'll shut it down at that point. And we might... Oh heck, let's try and roll properly. Could be upside down, could be right side up, but we'll go right side up for now. I mean, it doesn't look bad. Doesn't look bad at all. We're not that far down range as you can see. So it's looking pretty good actually. For an RTLS. Once we get to 3,000 meters per second surface, we can probably go a little bit higher throttle there. 3,000 meters per second surface, I think we'll have enough with the lander to make orbit. And you can see we have tons of Delta V in this stage. After all, it's supposed to lift Starship, the full thing. It's not particularly overburdened right now. So we'll just say 30 seconds then, I think. Uh, will be a good milestone. We're reserving 30 seconds of its full throttle amount, so that's more than 15% of the fuel in the stage. Okay, shut down, separation and ignition. And before we let that go, I want to see 3,883 meters per second left in this to do what it needs to do to get back. I think maybe landing on the barge will be more feasible, but we could probably reserve more if we needed to though, looking at this right now, but we'll see. I forgot about those RCS. Well, we only need the RCS here for control, I think. I think ideally we would like to lock the Merlin 1D vacuums as far as gimbling. Let me see how well that would work out. Hmm, it's not working out great right now at all. Oops. Okay, not that locked. Not that locked. Looks like we'll need some gimbling after all. Oh, we'll need to strengthen the thrusters somewhat. Ooh, it overcorrected. Okay, can you... Can somebody just stop this thing from turning for a sec here? So, we would need, you know, a fair number of ignitions on the Merlin 1Ds to make a whole lot of landings on the moon. But that should be easier than getting a whole lot of ignitions out of raptors or something. And then I don't know what kind of small engines they were planning on for the upper engines for the final phase of landing. What kind of configurations those have and how many ignitions they would have. That we'll have to get from SpaceX. I don't know, there must be something off-center about things. Now, I guess it might be the way that we put stuff in here might be a little bit off-center. Especially the docking port arrangement. Okay, and shut down. 246 by 208, and that's how it would get to orbit, basically. Still super heavy, super heavy will be recoverable, and all that. Well, hopefully. I mean, that's another business. And let me uh, test out the thrusters on here. I bet I don't have proper plumes on them. We'll, we'll see. Down. Okay. So, um, oh, these run on kerosene as well, right? Well, let me just see. Uh, oh, they have plumes. Okay. Oh, there's a bit of a kick there. Hmm. They don't really have gimbling, but I guess we'll just retain the gimbling on the vacuums. I should change the mesh so it doesn't clip into the engines. There's some tweaking that needs to be done here. But alright, there's the idea. That's the idea for you. And I'll get your thoughts and I will develop this further because I sort of like this pod actually. I can see good things happening with it basically. 
and it will be handy. It's still really heavy though, but anyway, that's a separate thing. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.